Over the last two years, it's hard to argue anyone in the NFL has had a steeper fall from grace than Antonio Brown. Since abruptly retiring from the NFL mid-game, AB has constantly found himself in the headlines. Whether that's for taunting his former teammates or becoming the most average rapper of all time, the bizarre downfall of Antonio Brown's career has been hard to divert your eyes from. And now, in the most recent chapter of the saga, after purchasing an arena football team, with the players going unpaid, coaches walking, and charges being filed, it's going about as well as you'd expect an Antonio Brown business venture to go. On March 2nd, 2023, the Albany Empire held a press conference with Antonio Brown announcing that he had just purchased the team. And not only that, but additionally, his father, Eddie Brown, would join the franchise as the VP of Football Operations. To understand why that's significant, we have to go back almost 30 years prior to 1994. Antonio Brown's father, Touchdown Eddie Brown, as his nickname would indicate, was an absolute beast on the football field in his own right. After playing college football at Louisiana Tech University, Eddie Brown went on to play 10 seasons in the Arena Football League with the Albany Firebirds. Now, Touchdown Eddie Brown, he wasn't just any ordinary Arena Football League player. In Brown's rookie season, he would win the MVP of the league, and in 1999, he would lead his team to an Arena Bowl victory, and afterwards, he'd be crowned MVP of the game. Once, he scored nine touchdowns in the game, and afterwards, he celebrated by smoking his first cigar. My kids looked at me like I was crazy when I lit up, said Brown. I told them, when you score nine touchdowns, it's okay to smoke. Eddie Brown was so pivotal to the Arena Football League that in January of 2006, as the AFL celebrated its 20-year anniversary, Brown was voted the best player in league history, winning the award over guys who would eventually make the switch to the NFL, like Kurt Warner and Jay Gruden. Now I know what you guys are probably thinking, Antonio Brown doesn't sound like he's fit to manage a Dairy Queen, let alone a professional sports franchise. But maybe with the help of his dad and some other business partners, this thing could work itself out. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Get off the field right now. Uh, we're, we're you gotta about. get off the field right now. We're going nowhere. You gotta go get us some bigger muscles. Right now. We're going nowhere. You're going off the field right now. You're going off the field right now. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, 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 hey. You're going off the field right now. I'm going out. Make me there. Make me. You get off. You get off. I'm gonna stay right here. Let's go. 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 Prior to Antonio Brown's purchase of the team, the Albany Empire were a dominant force in the league, winning the last two championships. But it didn't take long for the first signs of disaster to show. On April 18th, at an Empire home game, Brown would get into a dispute with the security guard on the field. After winning the first game of the season, the Empire would go on to drop their next two games, taking the record below 500 for the first time in two years. Behind the scenes, it would come out that there was just one small problem. The Empire hadn't paid their players or their coaches since April 21st. According to TMZ, eventually the athletes agreed to suit up when they were shown what appeared to be payment confirmation. But following Sunday's game, Castronova, the team's quarterback, said they were still without their check, and several captains decided to confront officials on the bus back from North Carolina. This altercation on the bus resulted in a police report being filed by kicker Michael Hall, who says he was punched in the face by one of the suspended players. Side note here, in fairness, you know, sometimes kickers at practice, they're in the corner doing their own little thing. Maybe whoever punched him in the face thought he was actually one of the owners. Anyways, once they got back to their hotel, where the captains and several other players discovered their room keys no longer worked, and hotel staffers told them that it was Antonio Brown's doing. When head coach Damon Ware tried to confront Brown about the matter, according to Ware, AB would resort to texting violent threats. It would get so bad that Ware would leave the team and it's currently unclear if the players involved in the confrontation are either suspended or gone entirely. And as for the payment dispute, the team blamed the issue on a payment processor and the transition from a previous owner, which still wouldn't explain getting paid for the first game or a fake payment confirmation. 
In the meantime, the Empire conducted themselves the way any other professional sports team would. They took it to Instagram looking to replace the players they lost and then canceled the tryout. And it looks like they've already found a coach because on May 2nd, the team announced that they had reached an agreement in principle with coach Tom Menace, who coached the Empire to their two previous championships, even though he was fired initially just days before the season. It's a happy day for me to be out of this crazy situation where said, goodbye and good riddance. Brown uh, told me uh, that he's okay with players leaving because he wants to bring in his own players. The current roster is from previous ownership. AB said he will bring in new players for tryouts starting tomorrow ahead of Saturday night's home game against West Texas at MVP Arena. Sabrina, oh, back over to you. That's for sure. Roger, thank you. So what's next for the Albany Empire? Well, the Times Union, the newspaper that originally broke the story, has continued to release updates, the most recent being a story that questions how much of the team Brown actually owns. According to the article, Brown's representatives insist that at least technically speaking, he doesn't actually own any percentage of the team. Instead, Antonio El Ala Express Trust Enterprise actually owns 95% of the team. However, that's not all. This company is actually connected to multiple other, both foreign and domestic LLCs, which is extremely unusual for a sports team. At this point, it starts to get even more bizarre because in a letter sent on behalf of Brown to the newspaper, Brown opens up by addressing himself as a foreign national but not a citizen of the United States at birth, which contradicts the fact that he was actually born in Miami, Florida, according to ProFootball.com. What all of this apparently entails is that there's probably multiple silent partners overseas who wish to stay anonymous for whatever reason. So where does that leave us? Well, we might not quite know who exactly owns the team, but for whatever it's worth, Antonio Brown came out in a press conference on Wednesday, May 3rd, and assured everyone in the organization was paid. And I hope so. It sounds like this guy has money. The guy's also working to close on a $12 million estate in upstate New York. That might be a start in the right direction, but let's be honest, my confidence level in Antonio Brown is pretty low. This is the same guy that a week ago tweeted out he's going to end his career with the Baltimore Ravens, which turned out to be news to the Baltimore Ravens. But anyways, let me know what you guys are thinking about this Antonio Brown situation. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.